uh, reactor has been uh, under evaluation by a small uh, community, uh, Galena, Alaska. Uh, this is a community on the banks of the, uh, um, ah, not the Mackenzie River. Uh, anyway, uh, in a very ro remote location uh, in uh, Alaska where they have to depend on uh, diesel fuel being shipped upriver uh, during the summer when it isn't frozen. And they have to rely on that the rest of the year. They're not connected to any grid. There is no connection between other communities. Uh, their indoor air emissions are high uh, and their air quality is poor and they're looking for option. They've uh, had some uh, research uh, projects done by the Department of Energy under a grant to look at options uh, for them moving forward. And a small reactor like the Toshiba uh, was listed high on the list. We also see areas where our Air Force bases and other uh, Department of Defense bases are looking at ways to prepare for their energy security uh, and also to green their grid and are looking at some of these small reactors as well. The interesting thing about a small reactor is it gets away from the paradigm we have where you have a grid that has base load, intermediate, and peak to meet demand. A system like this needs to come in and meet and exceed all the demand expected for that community. That means you'll have surplus power, which means you have to then link that system with something else. So when you need electricity, you produce electricity. When you don't, you produce fresh water, for instance, or hydrogen or heat for growing crops, great, and so forth. Uh, so these are very excited, uh, ex uh, very exciting to me about their ability in the future, but we are talking decades before these systems are being deployed. Next slide, please. So speaking of a system that then requires the linkage between different systems, I think in fact the hybrid energy systems will be part of our future. We talked about the three uh, different key drivers, how currently today we have stovepipe thinking, we only focus on climate, or we only focus on energy security, or we only focus on economic development. Even our, uh, within, in the U.S., within the halls of Congress, even the committees are structured in a way that keeps them from looking at holistic solutions. I think in the future, just as a hybrid electric vehicle today is harnessing both electricity and fossil fuels, you're going to see a connection like that in the future. They will provide greater uh, efficiency for that given application with a lower environmental impact. I'd like to share with you a couple examples. Next slide, please. Some of the nuclear systems, even today, there are companies looking at how they might take the low-grade heat that is released to the environment from our existing light water reactors and how to perhaps couple that with biofuels manufacturing to reduce the carbon footprint of the biofuels and reduce the impact on the environment from the heat. We already, of course, store electricity with pumped uh, hydro storage. And as we develop compressed air storage and others, there are opportunities not just for renewables, but today we're already storing this inexpensive base load that needs to operate consistently day and night. So that's an opportunity. Uh, next slide. There are also opportunities for uh, hybrid uh, fossil nuclear, and, and we talked about that before. You hear about the oil shale in Canada. Today we use huge amounts of fossil fuel to extract, refine, and transport other fossil fuels. If, in fact, we could use a low-carbon energy source to help with that, we could then save those fossil fuels for important end uses. And uh, there are opportunities, tar sands, oil shale, uh, our oil refinery uh, takes a tremendous amount of energy and releases a fair amount of carbon. Conventional coal to liquid is very CO2 intensive. If, in fact, we can split water and have hydrogen and oxygen economically from an advanced reactor, we could drive that process so 100% of the carbon atoms from the coal end up in the final liquid petroleum products. And that would be an advantage. So um, next slide, please. This is the concept in the United States, the what we call NGMP or next generation nuclear plant. This was authorized in the 2005 Energy Policy Act. This uh, prototype is to demonstrate the capability to do both electricity and off-peak to do either hydrogen or process heat production. Uh, we're moving forward with what we call this high temperature gas reactor. It's exciting. Uh, one example of this is being developed in South Africa, the pebble bed you may have heard of. But these reactors will help us 
provide electricity, process heat for a variety of applications like getting those unconventional uh, fossil resources we talked about, producing hydrogen, not just for cars. We use hydrogen in a whole variety of applications. Remember, fertilizer is made out of ammonia, which is basically hydrogen. This is important for life. We can help produce it and produce it without using natural gas, which may be necessary for other higher value applications. And finally, of course, fresh water, which the developing world needs. So with that, I thank you for your attention. I appreciate this opportunity, and thank you very much.